are a design driven uh, developer company uh, focusing on emerging cities in the Philippines. We only develop uh, green buildings, we are vertically integrated, we design, we acquire the property, we develop and we sell. And uh, now we are also in property management. Uh, we are a member of the Philippine Green Building Council and the U.S. Green Building Council, and we are also being awarded by EDGE, which is the green uh, building rating system developed by the World Bank through uh, IFC. Uh, and also we have uh, been awarded uh, for our project in Cagayan de Oro by USAID. Uh, these are some of the awards we got in the last few years of operation. George and I, uh, we have been featured in uh, 2014 in National Geographic Asia for our innovation in real estate. So this is myself. Uh, I am an architect by profession. I have been designing also cars in Italy for, uh, I, I participated to, to some competition for BMW and uh, Mitsubishi where I got awarded. And uh, my partner, Giorgio Leviste, who is, from, is Filipino, but he has been uh, studying in Australia. And we, uh, actually the company started when in 2009 we m met here in the Philippines and we shared the same, I, uh, the same advocacy for sustainable development. So that's uh, when the idea of uh, setting up Italpina started. Um, just a few slides about our unique value propositions. Um, when, we, when we started the company, of course, we understood that uh, we would have been uh, quite small compared to the major and established developer, uh, developers in the Philippines. So uh, we wanted to have a specific niche. Uh, these are our unique value propositions, which is, uh, 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 first, we are totally committed to sustainable development. So we, are, we, are, we develop only green buildings. Uh, using passive green strategy. So in, in this way, buildings are also accessible, affordable, so we can deliver units green uh, to the middle market. Uh, we are interested in emerging cities in the Philippines. At that time, already in 2009, with Jojo, we had the impression that all the developments were in Metro Manila, but going around the Philippines, which has uh, several thousand islands and so hundreds of cities, we were uh, experiencing a lack of uh, units or let's say world class or uh, decent buildings around, the, around those uh, cities. So we were thinking why don't we be the one to develop those buildings because I mean coming from uh, abroad uh, we knew we have, uh, uh, we know that sooner or later in the Philippines there will be condominium buildings in many other cities. So we judge we said let's be the one to do it. Uh, new middle class, this is also another uh, quite interesting uh, aspect of our company. Um, Philippines, as you, we can see later in our slides, is experiencing a very interesting growth of the middle class. Uh, this is the opposite of what's happening, for example, in my, in my country, in Europe in general, where the, the middle class is shrinking. So just a few slides about uh, passive green design, how we are able to develop uh, green buildings without making them very expensive. What we do, um, we uh, gather data about the weather condition of the place where the building is going to be built. Uh, data as a uh, weather condition like uh, the, the rain, uh, the, the wind, the speed, the direction and things like that. We uh, integrate this uh, uh, data with parametric software. Uh, these parametric software are off the shell. I mean, anyone can buy, but of course, you have to know how to use them. And uh, this software gives us uh, uh, the best, the, the, a model which is considered to be the best uh, model to satisfy uh, certain, sol certain uh, solution that we have been set at the beginning. This is just an example uh, of a project uh, in Cagayan de Oro. Um, anyway, on the left, uh, on the left part, uh, we, there is a uh, data gathering about the wind, so the, where the wind comes from, the speed during this different season. On the right side, there is the temperature data during the entire year. Uh, on the right part, uh, on the bottom, there is the sun path. Um, as you know, the sun path is always different. In every diff it changes in, in relation to the place where you build. So it's very important for us, above in the Philippines, where uh, most of the energy is uh, used uh, for uh, aircon to create shading systems so that the, the unit inside the building are maintained, uh, the temperatures maintain lower. Uh, this is a video um, of a uh, very short video about the simulation we did for a project in Santo Tomas Batangas. Uh, the first uh, is uh, we were planning to develop three towers. And with this software, we were able to uh, find the best uh, uh, location orientation of the buildings, also number. In fact, 
we reduce the, the, the towers from three to two. Um, this is instead regarding uh, the, uh, how the buildings behave uh, uh, with wind. So what we usually do, we want to increase natural uh, in, uh, ventilation inside the buildings when the, the wind is, uh, is normal. And we want to reduce any potential damages when uh, the wind is strong in, in case of typhoon. That's why the shape of the building is, uh, uh, is like that. This is uh, um, another software that uh, helps us to uh, uh, design and build uh, louvers or cantilever structure in such a way that we have inside the unit uh, natural light but without having uh, uh, the temperature inside increase too much. So these are some of the features that we use. Um, this is very important because many people, when uh, developer or designer, they talk about green buildings, they make it, uh, they take it for granted that the buildings uh, have to be expensive. Uh, this is because uh, uh, most of the green buildings use active green strategies, which means the building is developed and design, designed and developed using the same criteria of the past, just adding a lot of high technological features like uh, special lighting, special hair cones, special film on the windows. All these special things sp cost special money, I would say. So uh, at the end, uh, these units are only for the uh, top of the market. With Jojo, from the very beginning, we, we thought that there is a middle class who deserve, who would like to have unit green, so uh, able to reduce uh, uh, their also uh, consumption of energy so that they can um, spend less at the end of the month for their bill uh, at an affordable price. So what we use is passive green design strategies, which is what I show you. We, also like, we like to say uh, less uh, hardware, most, more software means we use a lot of software in, in order to anticipate the behavior of the building. So a few words about the middle class. That's a quite interesting, uh, these are quite interesting, interesting slides. Uh, as you can see, the number are uh, quite big. We are talking about a country with uh, more than 100 million uh, people living in it. And these are uh, uh, um, the ch numbers about the middle class. When we say middle class, it's a uh, family uh, that earned between two to $20. Um, this means that there is a backlog of uh, units in this country. Uh, when, we talk, when you talk about lack of units, we have to understand what kind of units uh, are lack. Um, we are talking about socialized uh, houses and uh, middle cost units. Uh, with Italpinas, at the moment, we are only uh, targeting the middle class. So units that cost, uh, let's say, average to two to three million pesos. Uh, just uh, now uh, a few slides about emerging cities. This is, uh, I would say, my favorite uh, section, my, my favorite charter, chapter, because it's quite interesting to see what happened in the Philippines and what's happening now in the Philippines. In 1950s, in the Philippines, where uh, they were living around uh, 18 million people and uh, 1.5 million were, were used uh, to live in Metro Manila. Uh, there was a very aggressive migration from people, in, from, the pro people from the provinces used to uh, go aggressively in Metro Manila looking for opportunities because there were no opportunities in their provinces. Also because life 20 years ago or more was uh, different. I mean, there was no internet, it was very complicated to move, it was expensive to fly, and so on. This, uh, uh, we call it centrifug uh, centripetal migration, created uh, several problems that I, I'm not gonna be here to explain you because I'm sure that you live uh, these problems every day, as such a traffic, uh, very high cost of living, and, and so forth, so on. Uh, what is happening, and what I would proudly say George and I uh, anticipated in 2009, is what we call a centrifugal migration. Uh, Filipino, overseas Filipino, expat are thinking to go back to uh, other cities where they can find more opportunities, where they can find better, um, better uh, uh, um, lifestyle, cheaper, and so on. And that's, this is really happening. Um, just to give you um, an anecdote, uh, when, when we George, George and I went to, um, in 2010, we were looking for financing from banks, uh, we showed our project uh, and they used to tell us, ah, the project is very nice, but where are you going to develop? In Fort, in Makati? Say, no, actually in Cagayan de Oro. And they look at us like, you're a stupid guy, what are you going to do in Cagayan de Oro with these beautiful buildings? 
Uh, there is no market there. That's why there are no buildings, there are no condos. With Jojo, actually, uh, we are thinking maybe it's the opposite. There are, no, uh, there are no clients because there are no condos to buy. So if we uh, uh, develop uh, condominium buildings, most probably overseas Filipino, which by the way represent a big part of our client, will be interested to buy in their own cities. Uh, but not too many people, I have to say, gave us credit at the time. I would uh, actually thank, I don't know if uh, there is someone here from Land Bank, BPI, and now uh, DBP, who supported our idea at that moment. Uh, so now let's go to projects, uh, what we have done, uh, what we are doing, and what we are going to do. As you can see, th there are no projects at the moment in Metro Manila. Uh, we started from Mindanao. We are going uh, now to Batangas and soon to the Visayas. Uh, these are the projects that I'm going to, um, to, show, to show today. Uh, Primavera Residences in Cagayan de Oro uh, is completed uh, and fully sold out. We have Primavera City under construction at the moment, and Santo Tomas, in Santo Tomas, Batangas, we have Miramonti, which is going to be launched soon. So uh, about Primavera Residences, it has been awarded in 2014 as the best mixed-use uh, condominium in the entire Philippines by uh, International Property Award. Uh, this was the first time that a condominium was awarded with this prestigious uh, award outside Metro Manila. We are in Cagayan de Oro. I know Mindanao today is not really, as you say, the flavor of the day, you know, because uh, what's happening, but uh, <laughs> we are very confident that this is going to be just a spark. So this is the building. These are actual photos. The building is, complete, is completed and, again, fully sold out. We are in a um, high elevated part of Cagayan de Oro, just beside an SM mall. Uh, we also have uh, uh, photovoltaic panels on the rooftop uh, to produce energy. This energy is given to the common area so that the, the unit owners uh, have a lower uh, uh, monthly dues. Uh, this is the pool located at the third floor, which contributes to reduce the, uh, the temperature of the air that gets inside an inner courtyard, which is this one, that goes from the third floor up to the roof. And this works as a natural chimney uh, and increases the, the ventilation, the inner ventilation of the units. According to our computation during the design stage, this build, the unit owners save around 22% uh, of energy, and that's real, actually, in, 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 in real life, that, that, that's what's happening. Uh, this is just um, a unit, and this is our office. Um, also, this is a, an important slide, because we can uh, have good ideas, good design, uh, many, other go many good things, but if the market doesn't appreciate what you do, I mean, you fail. We are in the market, the market is the last judge. And uh, we have ex been experiencing a very high uh, real estate appreciation, value appreciation in our uh, uh, buildings. And this is um, a snapshot of uh, our clients. Uh, we are confident that this is going to be uh, similar in every place we go, we will go in the Philippines to develop buildings. Ongoing project, we have uh, Primavera City, which is uh, located uh, very close to Primavera Residences, just on the other side of uh, SM Mall. Uh, this, this project is going to be awarded tomorrow in KL as, again, the, mix, uh, the best mixed-use building in the entire Philippines in 2016-17 uh, in uh, Bangkok by uh, the International Property Award. Uh, again, we are in Cagayan. This, uh, this is the project. It's much bigger compared to Primavera Residences. Uh, it's composed by seven towers, which one is going to be a high-rise tower. The entire complex is covered with uh, uh, 10,000 square, 10, square meters of uh, semi-transparent photovoltaic panels, which will cover the entire rooftop, and uh, they will cover the amenity. Uh, it will produce a quite big an amount of energy, around 1,440,000 kilowatt hour per year. This power will also be given to the, um, to the condo corp. When I say given, we are not going to give it for free. We are going to give it for a lower rate compared to the utilities in that place. So let's say if Sepalco, which is the utility in Cagayan, is selling the power for, let's say, 10 pesos per kilowatt, we will sell it for eight. So with an instant uh, gain for the unit owners. <clears throat> this is a view from <clears throat> the rooftop with the photovoltaic panels. Uh, last project is uh, going to be launched um, soon, a uh, couple of months. We are just waiting for the last uh, permit, which is the license to sell. 
Uh, for people that are not from the Philippines, I would say that uh, it's not difficult to get permits here, at least compared to my country in Italy, where it's much more difficult. So <laughs> I don't know, it depends where you come from. <laughs> but uh, it's, uh, it, it's quite fast. And uh, this project is, is the first project we are going to do in Luzon. The location is a uh, quite interesting location because we are located in Santo Tomas, which is uh, in, uh, in the Calabar zone area, uh, where a lot of uh, industrial parks are located. We are talking about uh, hundreds and hundreds of uh, uh, factories. Uh, this is uh, the location of Santo Tomas, which is uh, exactly in the middle between uh, uh, Manila and the port of Batangas. Uh, and we are just located uh, uh, on the exit road of uh, Santo Tomas. Uh, this is uh, uh, how the buildings will look like when once uh, phase one and phase two will be completed. Phase one is the one on the left. Uh, phase two is the uh, one on the right. If you want, uh, uh, the best way to predict the, fu to predict the future is to design it. That's what we have been doing with uh, Giorgio and all the other people working in Italpina since we started. Thank you very much for your attention.